So in high school, I was fascinated by Victorian ideas on female mental health. Things like hysteria being caused by wandering uteruses or the cure to depression being found by lying in bed for weeks at a time amused me. In my 251 class, when I learned about psychoanalytical approaches to literature, I knew I had to read my favorite Victorian short story in this manner. The Yellow Wallpaper is not only a critique on women's mental health care, however, it is also a cautionary tale of what happens when individuals are removed from the symbolic order. The symbolic order is one of three developmental phases. The first is the real order. In the real order, infants are one with anything that gives them pleasure. This is most often their mother. The next stage is the imaginary order. In the imaginary order, individuals realize that they are a separate entity and they are becoming their own being. The final order is the symbolic order. That's where we as adults are right now. We learn through language that there are rules and regulations and that everything has its place. This is enforced through the law of the father, making the symbolic order patriarchal in nature. Charlotte Perkins Gilman illustrates what happens when individuals are forcefully removed through her use of setting and the two houses. The first house is the narrator and her husband John's current townhome. The family is away in the country house while they wait for repairs on the townhouse to be completed as well as repairs on the narrator's mind. Both of these changes are brought about by John acting in his role as the enforcer of the law of the father to bring both his wife and the house in line with the symbolic order. We can see that this house is um, representative of the symbolic order as everything has a place and a purpose. The color is there for a reason, the windows are in a specific order. It's purposeful and practical. However, John chooses a house to reside in that resembles his wife's psyche immensely well. The house is three miles from town, strange, broken, queer, and not really in line with Victorian ideas of beauty. Likewise, the narrator is strange, queer, she's mentally ill, she doesn't fit in. First, because she's a woman and a bit defiant in a patriarchal society, but also because she's mentally ill. Um, adding fuel to the fire, John separates her from society by putting her in the top of the house, away from society used as a, an asylum through, and we can see this through the gouges on the floor and bite marks on the bed. Likewise, he separates his wife from society by forbidding her from visiting people or even moving down to the bottom of the house after her complaints. Through Charlotte Perkins Gilman's use of setting in the two houses and in the room, she illustrates that when individuals are forcefully removed from the symbolic order, they retreat into the safe and loving arms of the maternal order where they have of the maternal real order. Thanks. <laughs>